Good afternoon and uh, welcome everyone to Creative Conversations Digital. James, I'm gonna mute you. Hold on for one second. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you and welcome to Creative Conversations Digital with Sit Lali Fabian and James Estrin. Um, thanks for joining us. My name is Max Fields. I'm the Associate Curator at PhotoFest and I'm thrilled to be in your company today as this discussion will surely be thrilling. Um, before we begin, um, I have a bit of important house cleaning. Um, PhotoFest would like to acknowledge all of the funders and supporters who have made this event and uh, the home of the people uh, who live there exhibition possible. Um, we'd like to extend our gratitude to the Brown Foundation, the Houston Endowment, National Endowment for the Arts, the Texas Commission on the Arts, the City of Houston through the Houston Arts Alliance, Philip and Edith Leonian Foundation, the Powell Foundation, the Wortham Foundation, the WWW Foundation, the Robert Rauschenberg Foundation, Judith and Gamble Baldwin, Wendy Rotris and Frederick Baldwin, Katie and Michael A. Casey, David and Martha Moore, Nina and Michael Zilka, and the PhotoFest Board of Directors. We also want to thank Papa's Restaurants and Lubbock Commercial for their support uh, of the exhibition through their donation of the exhibition space on their property. And we'd like to thank Silver Street Studios and Sawyer Yards for similarly uh, allowing us to present uh, these works in public in Houston um, in the Arts District Houston neighborhood. Now, moving on, let me introduce our guests. Today, we are joined by Silali Fabian and James Astran. Silali Fabian is a Oaxacan artist who explores notions of identity in relation to analog photographic practices, including 19th century photographic processes. Her work has been shown in solo and group exhibitions in Mexico, the US, Spain, and Argentina. Fabian's most recent body of work, Mestizo, was featured in the New York Times Lens blog and selected as one of the 13 favorite lens stories of 2018. Her work has appeared in publications including Remscala, uh, Revista, and Curacero Magazine, and IM Magazine. She is a member of Women Photograph and Natives Photograph Collectives. And Fabian's work is in collections around the globe, including in Toledo um, and the Patricia Conde Collection in Mexico City and the Whitliff uh, collections at the Texas State University in San Marcos. James Estrin is a New York Times staff photographer and writer. He was the founder and co-editor of Lens, the New York Times photography blog, and was part of the team who won the 2001 Pulitzer Prize for na uh, national reporting for the series, How Race Has Lived in America. Estrin was the co-executive producer of the documentary film, Under Fire, the untold story of PFC, Tonio Vaccaro, which appeared on HBO in November of 2016. He is an adjunct professor at the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. Following their conversation today, our guests will engage in a Q&A with the attending audience. Uh, so if you have any questions, please feel free to enter them in the chat if you're watching on Zoom or if you're on YouTube, enter your comments, questions, uh, or concerns in the uh, YouTube comment box. And at the end of the program, um, when uh, James and Sitlali have concluded their presentation and discussion. Um, we'll round up those questions and um, we'll get your answers. Um, again, thank you all so much for joining us today, your support and um, your repeated attendance in these programs has been really wonderful. And we're thrilled to have Sitlali and James here for an amazing talk. Please welcome them. Um, and Sitlali and James, please join us on video. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you both so much for uh, for doing this, and I'm I'm really excited to hear your uh, conversation. Hi, Sit Lolly. Hi, Jim. It is an honor to be in this panel with you today. And I'm so grateful to be here with you. I admire your work so much. You know, I was thinking about how we first met which was at Houston Photo Fest, right? Yeah, two years ago in 2018. Well, almost three years ago, right? Yes, Time that's flight. wild. And but it was only two years. And we were on a bus, you know, doing, stopping at different exhibits uh, uh, with um, reviewers and other uh, people attending. And um, we had never met. And I, 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 you know, I, I, I think I started talking with you and you were telling me about your work. And I remember you having just two of these photographs 
wrapped in very carefully in a box and wrapped in like velvety material and you unwrap them these precious little gems these four by five ambrotypes and now today those photographs are about 15 or 20 feet tall <laughs> being exhibited at photo fest <laughs> Yeah, it, from from a very um, uh, personal, small size, uh, contemplative, like almost almost yeah, this intimate relationship now to this colossal image that that also the, the technique allows, right? Because it is it is very forgiving on on this uh, kind of of process as well. Indeed, it, it's really remarkable how. Uh... How, how beautiful they look. Um, how, can you explain the title, Mestiza, and how you came to the concept for this project? Okay, I'll, I'll try to do this as short <laughs> as possible. Uh, We're not in a rush. About, about the, the series. Um, well, um, since I started to practice photography, making images has been a way to explore my own identity, to talk about my concerns um, and to look for open dialogues for sure, to talk about all representation in images. And when I say all representation, I, I'm talking about my people, my community, my family, my friends, how we see each other and how and with whom we feel identified. Mestiza is the first body of work I created in collaboration with my family friend, and friends. It is a series I started in 2014 while I was studying my master degree. And uh, at that time, I also was studying and practicing 19th century techniques, particularly wet plate collodion. And obviously I was mesmerized by the technique qualities, the beauty of the photo object. Um, for those who have been able to see them or practice these techniques, uh, you know, the, gla the glaze play details are astonishing. And at that time I was uh, exploring different ideas of how to talk about femininity, identity, and our heritage, of course. Uh, it was something like a Mexican femininity heritage. And I know it's a lot to put in one plate, right? Uh, the wet plates were giving me this uh, blink to the past, not just because uh, the technique, uh, which is associated also with uh, the first expedition and anthropologist um, records, but also because uh, the practice this particular photograph, photographic act, sorry, the images themselves were able to transport us and connect us with some dormant part inside of us. The technique itself captures details from a different part of the spectrum. And I know I'm, I'm a little technical on this part, okay. but but I, but I just wanted to explain a little bit more about also the, the approach uh, to the technique. So the technique itself captures certain part of the light spe spectrum who makes uh, brown skin as mine darker, but also show every single detail and a lot of texture. Giving to these portraits, and will, will, should I start that to share the screen? Yes, why, why don't you do that? Uh, thank you. And when you say technique, you're talking about a wet plate technique. These are four by five images. I forget the, the surface is um, tin it's or is it glass? It's glass. It's glass. It's glass. Um, yeah, it is glass. Uh, so, um, what what this uh, technique for for my perspective gives to this portrait it is an automatically blur on time um i think uh it is very important to remark that each portrait takes uh to the sitter to the model in front being in front of the lens from 10 seconds to one minute approximately uh, because it is a very low 
quite a sensitive process. But also, I think what it is more important in this uh, from this part, it is that it, it makes it a very conscious act of being portrait. It is like a performatic uh, mm. practice, especially nowadays when photography is so immediate. Um, one of my favorite memories from, from this series, and I'm going back to one of these images, mm -hmm. this one, uh, it, uh, in, in, in this one resonates a lot on, on, on the production of this series. Uh, this is a portrait I made from my friend Tanya in 2014. Uh, she's also a textile artist. Well, I'm not a textile artist, I'm an artist, but she's a textile artist from Oaxaca. And we were classmates during our master program. Um, she had the most genuine and uh, surprised expression when she saw her wet plate portrait by the first time. And she says, she said something like, oh my God, I look exactly as my grandmother, like my mm -hmm. grandmother. My uncles have told me my entire life and I have never seen it more clearly than in this picture. I so love this memory. Sorry? I'm sorry, go on. <laughs> I love this memory because uh, with Tanya expressing her feelings, the impact of an image on her own appreciation confirmed to me the purpose of this work, the possibility to recreate our images or representation to give us also the choice to be active parts creating these uh, honoric images. To revitalize our heritage, of course, but the most important to appreciate that, that dormant part calling in some way our ancestors. So I, this is, excuse me, so this is collaborative. You were talking about how that's really important. Mm -hmm. um, can you, you know, why, why is the collaboration important and how did that work out? And how did you come to what the images would look like? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, I think um, with um, what, what make, make me uh, this process being very clear about it, uh, it was how important it was to, to have this connection with the, the person I wanted to portray in these images. These uh, photo shoots took maybe one entire day of, of our lives that it doesn't sound a lot if you compare with the lifetime, but, uh, but it, it requires a lot of commitment from, from both of us. My, my family and friends give it, give it to me that time, but also we're, we're uh, very active in the part of choosing how much they wanted to show, how they wanted to show, and, and, and in some kind of way helping me to do the composition, of course. So uh, this, is, this is, I think, uh, the, the work was developed over four years. It was not a slow process for sure. So that means a lot of ideas, a lot of uh, conversations happen between each session and between between the people who was involved in this series. So, so in Mestiza itself means, um, as far as in English, it means a, a woman of mixed background, uh, especially having indigenous and Spanish descent. Is that is that right? And so all of these women, like you, have indigenous roots. Uh, yeah, but I would like to maybe extend a little bit more about it because okay. I think it is a very complex uh, way to to identify us. So I'm a, I'm an indigenous descendant. I I uh, I affirm my my identity as a Jalalteca, but while I was growing, it wasn't always that clear. I think it is especially hard to understand our identity to feel and embrace ourselves. When this construction of identity came from outside ideas, what makes you indigenous? In Mexico, it's, 
speak, uh, makes you an indigenous, the fact of being able to speak a native uh, language. My parents speak Zapotec, but I don't. And I don't because it is a, a very um, difficult process of healing, like all the, all the repression they suffer has repercute on how how was I uh, was raised, right? So I'm um, I'm not indigenous to the Mexican state because I don't speak Zapotec. I'm in the process of learning, but it is it is something that it is very confusing in a very gray area. But also in Mexico, while I was a child, um, and still being honestly the same, I always heard we were mestizos the result of two cultures mixing. But Mexico itself has more than 50 different indigenous nations. So which two cultures we are talking about? Also identifying us as mestizos, but in some kind of pedestal, the Spanish heritage, the Caucasian heritage, which I'm not able to see on me. And just over the surface, which is kind of feature I have. So I'm sharing these concerns to, to you mm -hmm. outside to, with my friends and family to try to understand our identity and to reshape our imaginary, imaginary story. While I, while I was creating these portraits with my family and friends, I wanted to connect us to show our, our diversity, our roots for sure, to honor our heritage. To do it more evidently, I choose these corn husks, the, the, all the features. And you can see now in, in the background, the images from, that are, are being displayed in, in the walls in the PhotoFest building. So I choose the corn husk as an element to create this connection, to crown us, to create this flamboyant or dreamy environment to refer obviously to these pre-Hispanic roots, to enhance this inner connection. Mm -hmm. uh, the, um, how did you come to photography? Uh, I, why are you a photographer? <laughs> why am I a photographer? I blame that on my father. <laughs> Uh, my, my dad owns a, a studio store, photographic store in, in Oaxaca City. And when I was a child, I grew up in the second floor of this store. So I always was fascinated by vernacular images from the people from Oaxaca coming to, to develop their, their, their treasures and their their birthday memories and all these, all these, um, yeah, all this approach to photography was was different just thirty years ago. Well, twenty years ago, when when I was when I was growing in Oaxaca. And you you hung out in the dark room there. Yeah, it's time to time I sneak on, on it, and I and I was I remember the first time I saw an image being developed. I was thinking, what what kind of of magic trick is this? <laughs> and and yeah, it was it was um, because because of that that appreciation for sure. What what makes me feel very intrigued about photography? And when I was a teenager, I I started to take. Um, photography courses and it was it was my way to to also explore the world and and collect my my own memories i think i think now now like everyone has a phone uh, uh, in in their phones a camera and it's it's very different now because photography is everywhere but when when you need it you actually go to develop and see see the objects itself was a very different approach well, and you use older processes, um, which are these slower processes, either uh, the wet plate or for some of your other projects, film. Um, what did, did you have any 
goals that you wanted to accomplish here um, as far as communicating? Or, or, or was it more just having helping your friends and yourself express um, your, your deep thoughts about identity? I think um, photography and arts in general, the, the purpose of, of making them, it is precisely to, to ask, to question, to find ways to critic in some kind of way, what, what are our, to, to express our concerns. I never, never dream to, to, be doing what I'm doing now because it is like a very difficult path to follow. <laughs> but, but I I think what what encouraged me more is to see these images, how how they are reshaping and embracing the 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 images of ourselves because it is not as as usual to to see like these these portraits of and not just these portraits, I mean, like with, with my other series, the, the photos that I have been doing of my, my Jalalteca community, uh, diaspora, how, how the, the photos reinforce uh, our, our roots and our, uh, our proud. It is very necessary to, to, to see to, to very encourage that that part of ourselves because for so many years we've been uh, just putting it on a side or kind of kind of you know that these this colonization um, processes has repercuted so much on us like in in my generation most of most of my generation lost their native language and that's that's something very very difficult to express how I feel the, the fact of not being able to speak my, my my parents language make me lost a lot of knowledge from my grandmother and that's also why I started to do some of, of uh, some of other projects that I've been doing because all these need to preserve the, the knowledge that I, in some kind of way, was denied, and it's a way to to recover it. Can you? Um, I don't know if you do. You have any of those images? Um, you know, we we um, you know the progression of you know from this work um, into that work is so interesting. Thematically, it's very similar. But, you know, I know you did this project. It has your... some, some places where they in, uh, uh, connect for sure. I, I have uh, another images prepared for that. And I think uh, the, the, that project, I started it um, much before I started. Oh, I see. But, uh, but it is... It is um, I think I like to work on long, long, long-term projects. Yes. Um, uh, I, just well, I guess to... it's, it's a little similar in the sense it's about identity. It's of course, extremely different in other ways, but it is about indigenous identity and your identity and the people from your village. Yes, of course. I would like to ask just for for the, the, the purpose of the exhibition in Houston, the, the walls that are the, the images that are in, in the walls in the photo first building. Uh, these um, the, the images that are presented in the walls are eleven of sixteen images from the series. And the design for for these uh, panels where was was made in collaboration with a studio friend from Oaxaca, Cadabra. I just wanted just to to give them the proper credit because they also uh, are part of of this particular piece, and I think that's very important to to clarify. And thank you. Then I'm going to stop the share. And it's such a beautiful, while you're looking at this, uh, for it, it's such a beautiful 
um, an elegant solution, right? The images themselves, of course, have borders. They're four by five plates, um, but large as they blend into each other, you and your friends at the colleagues at the studio really strengthened um, the way they work together. By yeah, I, I think something that was very important for me, especially for the walls in Houston, was to create this sense of unity. Un and, and it was achieved, of course, with, with, this, uh, with this design. I would like to share a little bit of the other work that okay. I'm working. I did a very short selection. But and could you, so as you're doing that, can you tell us a little about your village um, and also um, about the, how you photographed in the different steps and how you ended up with your zine? Just quickly, yeah. if you can do that. <laughs> of course. Uh, well, over, well, again, like some something like uh, always being part of, of my photographic, uh, I'm sorry, this is going a little fast. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Um, it's okay. Yeah, sorry. So where, where is your village? It's in Oaxaca. It's in the Yalala. mountains. Yalala is located in the North Sierra in Oaxaca. Um, it's the Zapotec village. Um, and this is this is it. My my parents are from there, but over the last year, uh, over the last years, seven years, I've been photographing uh, my community spread, not just not just uh, in Oaxaca, but in Mexico City and also Los Angeles. The images that are you seeing here are from different years and they reflect a little bit of this journey. I would like to stop in some of the images that I just didn't notice that I don't have that option. Like in this image, I'm very sorry for that. I didn't oh, no, it's fine. You're among friends here. Uh, I think it is better if I just, oh, sorry. I just keep it like this. Okay, then, that's fine. Then I can handle the, the way to, to show them. So I would like to start with this image. What I was saying before about like like I, I didn't um, this this project started as a way to dialogue with my grandmother. My grandmother loved loved photography. She was my first model. She I, I think was the first person that I took several photos of and it was, our, our conversations, unfortunately, were very, very limited. She was a Zapotec speaker. I was a Spanish speaker. And I, I, I think I, I learned the most of the Zapotec when, when, when we were living together because of this interaction, of course, and because we needed to communicate. So in, in, in this project, I, I am portrait, my family extended over different territories and how our culture or traditions keep with us. I know there are so many cultures in the world and I'm just talking about my, my, my experience in this one in, in, in this project. But I think in, in, in the way that we are able to see deeply more into other cultures, we can see the, how, 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 how we resemble each other what we shared and we can see there's uh, th th that, that there is that human part that connect us from, from different cultures around the globe. So this is a photo from the early, two early 2000s, I think so. It was taken by, by my dad in my parents' uh, village, in my parents' house, grandparents' house. And uh, you can find me over there with uh, all my, uh, well, part of my uh, cousins. It, they are not all my cousins, my family's very big. So just part of, of my cousins there. 
And I wanted to put it with this other black and white photo in the background to show uh, also this relationship on time and how 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 this memory just ha have it on on my mind, but it is obviously not not anymore there in an abandoned house. So the photos, as I said, are taken in different locations. This is in Oaxaca state, but not in the Oaxaca North Sierra. This is uh, in Oaxaca City. I am from, I'm from Oaxaca City. I'm currently in London, but this is the place I used to live before and where my community gathers uh, from the, for different celebrations. The town of my parents, my cousin Mela and uh, her husband, the day of their wedding. It is a journey over our, our stories and our, our encounters, of course. And this is my- it's, it, I'm, I'm sorry, it's, it's in the village, it's in Oaxaca City, it's in it's, Mexico it's in, City, it's in Los Angeles. Mexico. This is in Mexico City. This uh, this is not ordered by by okay. location because also what I what I wanted to do with this series is to erase this boundary uh, that separates us um, to kind of dilute the sense of time and space. I think it is very interesting to see how how we are connected to each other, even even when we are in uh, a different state or a different country even. And you, I, you made a zine to connect you? Uh, I made a zine uh, last year. I The purpose of the scene was to um, uh, put all the images, uh, well, not all the images, but part of the images from the different places that I've been working and distributed in, in the celebrations we, we gathered. Unfortunately, with COVID, the distribution of the scene is very slow now, but uh, as, soon, as soon as it is possible, I will keep on this. I, I made the scene also because to me, it's very important to bring the images to the people who is in the images. I, I, I think uh, when, when I think about the goals or the obje ob objectives I had with, with my photography is to go back to the places or to the people that, that are in the images or the, Im the, the images itself are, are, are for them. And the zine's I, not really for the public though. The public can get a copy. The zines is from all of these people who mm -hmm. are, originally come from that village or their ancestors and they're in all these places in diaspora or yes and also i i had the collaboration i i love i love to work with others so for for this for this scene i i ask and invite uh three of my friends from jalala as well who are um um, linguistic or, uh, or study anthropology or art, uh, art, history, art history. And they made beautiful texts to talk about their feelings of being uh, Jalaltecas, but all uh, uh, in, in the relation with migration processes and all that too. I think in that way, the, the, the stories connect and you can you can see all, all these connections between, between us in a more tangible way. And so if we can, um, only because we have, you know, we're somewhat limited in time, um, I'm wondering if we can uh, bring it back to the work that's on exhibit, um, which also comes out of, um, as you were saying, out, out of this I idea of uh, people's roots and identity and where you're from and the people in your family and friends and from your village. What in the work, what we didn't talk about in the other work is how gender plays into it. Um, do you want to switch back? I'm sorry for the difficulty, but switch back to the other work. 
I just wanted to, I wanted you to show this work because I think the context of it helps inform the work that's on exhibit in, uh, in Houston, right? Um, so, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this idea of identity and, and um, indigenous identity, but I remember when we first spoke, you also spoke, spoke about uh, gender and, uh, you know, these aren't your male relatives or your female rel relatives, your mother, your cousins, your friends. I I think it is the the, the image of of women has has been constructed not not by women at, at all. So it is it is now and always be very very important to have that control on us. I what I what I what I choose to work with with my cousins and my friends and my mom was because the conversation was there and it was it was it was something that you immediately feel feel connected. You understand understand the experience, understand that that need and for vulnerable groups, I think that that connection is it happens when when you are when you when you show that empathy. And um, I I hope from these images, other other women can can see themselves reflected. I think. I think from from this kind of visual representation, you can open to to see other 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 possible that there are other possible ways. Like I I love the fact that the 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 texture of of the process offers. Like I I. I I love how much details have my skin and and there it, it, like in a, in a time when everyone used filters to <laughs> and shape and how, like I I just feel it real and and I think it is important to 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 talk about what is what is that 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 what what makes this image more a little more real even when when they they are a stage right yes and, and the well the you know item itself the which we saw at the beginning the individual um plates the four by five plates there's a preciousness um and you know it's it's one of a kind there's a um intimacy you know, that's so profound. And of course your technique is flawless, <laughs> which is very rare when you see wet plate images, um, but your technique is perfect. But just, you know, it provides the holding in the hand as great as the 20 foot tall images are. And they hold up so well, as you said, technically. Um, there's also this other other thing of immediacy in, in handheld. Have you exhibited um, the uh, the actual plates ever? Uh, they were exhibited uh, just one time before in 2018. I was invited to exhibit this piece, uh, this, this work in, uh, in a cultural center in Oaxaca. So I had the opportunity there to show the entire series, but also to, I think because the space also allows, allows us to also share a little bit about the process. 
because well for most like I think as photographers like a lot of a lot of photographers know about the different techniques like are 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 being re retaken over last years right but the the the, the public in general doesn't doesn't know about this performance and for the purpose of this this exhibition it was very nice to also have a video and exp explain a little to the audience how how the images were made and it okay. is a completely it is a completely different uh, interaction with the piece, of course, as you see, like from, from, from the time when you saw, saw some of the plates in Houston, it was yes. this small plate that you almost needed to be disclosed to, to, yeah. to see. And, that, and it, is, it is a completely different relationship. And I also love that, that the fact that you have a, an object and is this fragile but beautiful um, precious treasure to, to to keep for for eternity. I hope. <laughs> well, I'm just so thrilled to see um, it, the the work being shown at Houston because you know we you were I think in reviews or and. Um, you know, you were you were showing the work, and it's it's been recognized um, in many places, and it's it's just beautiful that it's sort of back uh, at the Photo Fest. Um, thank you. You know, uh, I feel we you know we were unfortunately a bit rushed. I know they want to go to questions, and there are hours of things to discuss. You know, behind here, but I'm really. Uh, grateful to have this time to be with you. I'm, I'm very grateful as well, Jim. Uh, you, you are one of the uh, most inspiring and encouraging um, persons that I ever met and who, who encouraged me also a lot. So I am really happy to, to be in this conversation with you. Well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it is time for our audience Q&A with Asit Lali and James, if anybody has any questions, um, you know, go ahead and enter them in the chat the, if you're watching on Zoom or if you're watching on YouTube in the comment box. Um, and while we're waiting for some questions, I have a question of my own because I'm selfish. And you know, I have a question for you, Sit Lali. Could you could you tell us your thoughts on public art and how you believe your work functions in that sphere? compared to with more formal gallery presentations? I know this is not your first public artwork. I know you work with Studio Cadabra to produce other public um, projects. You know, could you talk about the importance of public art and what you hope the audience takes away from that experience? I think even, even before the pandemic, go out of, of the walls of a gallery, of a museum, um, it is very important as an artist just to, to to reach a more diverse audience. Like, like people in general sometimes get other oh, these in, in, in my my hometown in Oaxaca. People don't not always go inside of the gallery. But but if you had the opportunity to put a piece on the streets, it's going to to, to give a, a big more impact on 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 the society that you are looking to to have this this connection uh, as you said this is this is not the first piece that i made with with the cadaver studio we developed uh an, a, another piece last month uh in in oaxaca city and i think precisely like let us like if we, we said like culture like art is supposed to to be for everyone to to give it the, the right to everyone to, to being able to, to, to reach to it. But being honest, it is very elitist. Mm. And with this, with these shows, we are a step forward to being able to, to share it like properly with, with more diversity and, and, and to, to encourage other voices, to, 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 
I know I know requires a lot of investment, but I think it is very well rewarded. So I I am really, really um grateful with that with the sponsors for 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 this this show because it 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 can it can reach a lot a, a, a wider wider audience for sure. And Absolutely. and uh yeah let's and, and I, I'm pretty sure or I hope from from the from one of them the the the, the women who see this this show get inspired and and do their 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 own own way through through mm-hmm. arts and through photography. And and Jim, I have a I have a question for yes. you as well. Um, it's a similar question. You know, as as the founder of the New York Times Lens blog, I'm curious to ask how the inclusion of Sit Lolly's work on that pl- platform aligned with the Lens Blog mission? And you know, what did you hope that the visitors to the Lens Blog would take away from the online experience of viewing Sivali's work? Well, uh, you know, David Gonzalez and I, who were the co-editors of Lens for the uh, last eight years, you know, we, we very much wanted, wanted to show work that we thought was important. Um, that was, you know, um, that was both beautiful or, you know, very well done, um, moving uh, and important. And, you know, uh, when I saw this, I I knew right away that it's work that we would want to show, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, we're always been interested in issues of identity and as Sid Lolly mentioned, you know, who is having the conversations? Photography, um, you know, comes out of an era of uh, colonialism, right? And who is taking the pictures and how were people shown? So that plus the fact that the images are just exquisite, <laughs> as I said, flawless, you know, they're so beautifully connected. Um, I thought our, our viewers would, would uh, like this and benefit from it. And we, you know, we uh, did show it. It got a lot of response, a large amount of response from many people. And um, we ended up also uh, publishing um, Sid Lolly's other, uh, one of her other pieces of work as well. Uh, for me, it's um, this perfect marriage of art and um, social awareness of um, critical intellectual thinking and uh, visceral um, and immediate feeling. Mm-hmm. So that's that's why we shared it. You know, and, and um, I have another question. For you, Sit Lolly, could you could you tell the audience a little bit about where you are right now and what you're working on, um, you know, in this new location? <laughs> well, uh, currently I I am in London. I moved here for personal reasons, uh, but I still working on distance. I I've been um, over last year. I think we uh, we find uh, new ways to explore our creative creativeness, especially, uh, well, after the pandemic and for, for creators as me who work with, with people so, so close, it is not the same. And I will never be able to, to put my beloved ones on risk. So, I, I've been working a lot in new projects with, with their, my archives family, uh, with uh, people from my, my community, uh, creating new material it, from, from, from the distance is very um, challenging for sure. But at the same time, I am being having new revelations about how, how, to, um, how to feature the, the the concerns that I have and how how to put them on on the visual on the visual plate like in how how to make them work visually. 
So I'm working a lot with uh, new media, I'm uh, working, as I said, with uh, uh, families from the archive. One little example is the first image that I show to you from my series uh, uh, from Yalala, uh, from the photo with, uh, that, that, my, that took 20 years ago and uh, also with other images that I've been founding. So it is, it is, uh, it is funny because I, I already started to make this interv intervention and hand manipulated images before. Uh, Jim also have been seeing some of them, but this time has, has given, this, this, this pandemic has been given me the chance to actually really work on them, so. I hope to to develop to show this work very soon. Brilliant. Um, you know, it doesn't look like we have questions from the audience. You must be answering everything as we go along. But I'm curious to know if you two have any questions for each other before we uh, sign off. No final thoughts. I well, I I have you know I, I, I while you were. Um, just talking so Lolly, you know, the um, breadth of communication from these, you know, fine art, I think you would have to refer to them, uh, you know, plates and images, you know, um, uh, through the z two zines, you know, having all of these different ways to communicate your concerns and doing it so precisely and beautifully and intimately. Um, I'm just really looking forward to uh, this project you're working on now. Thank you. Yeah, I, I really hope to, to share it to, to you very soon. And also I'm looking forward to, to make more uh, pieces on the public Public space. I, I think that's my, my next goal is, is is also that like I, I really from all the work that I've been doing to put it in in um my, uh, in Jalala like in my parents' village and and make it make it um make this resonance with 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 uh, my community for sure. And thank you so much for the space. I, I am really enjoying to talk with you, Jim, and to to hear hear all uh, to respond to to the questions as 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 good as I can. Just remember, it's not my first time. So. <laughs> well, you're doing beautifully. There is one question, Max, about um, asking why she chose to work with plates. Oh. I'm sorry. Why I choose to work to work with the wet plates? Oh, I'm sorry. I I uh, when when I was well, I I my my personal work I don't develop it on digital. I have tried and I I simply fail on my attempt. <laughs> uh, I I find um, uh, 19th century processes or more um, hands-on processes. More, um, more personal, and in in particular with with the wet plate, it is it is as I said a performatic act, and these these series require require for me this this action of of. I think just one technique like this could offer offer to to complete the, the, the idea and to complete the, the, um, the intention for sure of, of, the, of the series. So yeah, it is, it is, it is because of that I still working on, on, on photographic antique processes or, or film itself. I, I also, plus I also love the fact of having a photographic object. I think that materiality gave gave that that body it 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 take make that for me yeah more real and I and I and I like to feel that I I can hold it and it's just not in some random place in my computer where I cannot and understand how that works. 
We have another question from Susan Tan, who asks um, at which galleries they can find your works. And I'm I'm curious to know. I I you can definitely see Silali's work on view at PhotoFest in the exhibition Home and the People Who Live There, which is on view through May 30th. But Silali, if people want to find your work, perhaps for purchasing or for um, or to learn more about it, you know, is there a gallery space or can they visit your website? Uh, they can go directly to my website. Uh, I don't work with any particular gallery at the time. Uh, I some some galleries in Mexico had some pieces of my work, but not particularly from my Mestiza series. Uh, so if you are interested for a print, of course you can reach to me on my website, and I there there is a there is the contact uh, uh, information and everything. And uh, it's ciclarifabian.com. It is, it is very easy to, to, to find everyone nowadays with the technology, just Google the name and there, there, there will be everything. And it's in the chat, which Max oh. added it to the chat. I'm answering all the, the, the making, making no mistakes so that everyone can find it quite easily. Well, um, before signing off, you know, I just want to thank you both again uh, for joining us. It's been an, an exciting conversation. And I'm so thrilled to have your time and participation and support for this project. Um, you know, we've received some wonderful notes in the chat on YouTube, you know, congratulations, and this is wonderful. And, uh, you know, it, it truly is an honor to speak with both of you. Um, and to hear more about your works at Lolly and to have your thoughtful questions and considerations, James. Um, it really is wonderful. Thank you both so much. Um, if, if our guests want to learn more about the exhibition that Sitlali, uh, within which Sitlali's work is uh, featured, you can visit the uh, PhotoFest website where you'll find links to um, not only information about the work, but also links to our app where you can download the uh, self-guided tour um, and a map so that you can find your way around the Arts District Houston and see the works. I'll put a link to that in the chat right now. Um, and I'll post that also in the comments on Facebook. Or, I mean, on uh, YouTube. And um, I also want to give a, a bit of a shout out for our next creative conversations. You know, this is one in a series of programs that we've been doing with all of the artists featured and, um, you know, Home and the People Who Live There exhibition. Um, and we're really privileged to have um, Daniel uh, Handel and Karen Haas um, for, our next, um, for our next Creative Conversations, which should be very exciting. Um, and I'll put a links, links to that, uh, information about that in the chat as well. And also a link so that you can revisit this conversation. I noticed that a few people joined this conversation a bit later. Um, I, I uh, put a link to the YouTube um, archive um, so that, you know, after this program, if you want to go back and watch the beginning, um, you can do so um, and definitely spread the word and share it with your friends. Um, so thank you all for so much for coming. Again, Sitlali, James, thank you so much. Uh, you're so brilliant and special. It's such an honor to be in your company. I feel so privileged. <laughs> Thanks, thank Max. You so thank you. Thank you for this space and thank you for, for everything. Brilliant. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.